I've been wanting to do the experiments we're going to do today for about six years. So know that the entire time that this is going on, inside, I'm like... <laughs> it is so, so fun. Let's get started. What held me back is I didn't have one of these. These experiments require a big copper plate, or if you have a big aluminum plate, I think you'll get pretty similar results. The second thing you need is a magnet, but not any magnet. Here's a regular magnet. Nothing really happens, and I don't really notice anything. We're gonna use a big neodymium magnet and an even bigger neodymium magnet. This one holds 500 pounds. Experiment one. Do not bring them close. I was trying not to do that. First thing I did once I got the copper plate was get my neodymium magnet and drop it on the copper. You see what that's doing? Wow, man, wow. It's just so cool. Why is it doing that? Look at how it drops on the normal table then drops on the copper. And I was like, what is going on? Am I in Asgard? Because it seems like magic just replaced science. So copper is not magnetic. If you bring a really strong magnet close to it, it won't stick to it. A piece of wood is also not magnetic. But the difference is this piece of wood won't do any of the experiments that we're gonna do today with the aluminum and the copper. Why do you think that is? Let me show you the experiment my teacher did 20 years ago that got me pumped on strong magnets and copper. He dropped the magnet down a copper pipe like this and gravity was defied. What? So crazy. It's like, what is going on? Newton told us things should fall and accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is not. So what is happening? The magnet's not sticking to the copper. It's also not falling how we'd predict with gravity on Earth. So what can explain this? Next, let's slide a really big magnet down a piece of wood. We notice the magnet slides down essentially uninhibited. Then we take that same magnet, put it on a piece of copper, and it slides like it's going through maple syrup. Isn't that so cool? Why do you think that is happening? If we increase the board to a little more vertical, do you think it'll still work? What if we make it so it's totally vertical? This makes me think that conservation of energy must be broke. How can we account for this? The potential energy at the top does not seem to match the kinetic energy we're getting at the bottom, which would mean energy's lost. But we're not supposed to lose energy. Where's the energy going? Then I noticed an aluminum weight would shift a little bit when I'd put a strong magnet over the top of it and move it. The aluminum wasn't magnetic, but it moved when the magnet went over the top. So I flipped up the piece of aluminum so it'd be like a wheel, moved the magnet over the top, and I could shift this aluminum weight. I thought it'd be a little easier if I used aluminum sphere instead that also wasn't magnetic. And we see the aluminum sphere would move around as the magnet shifted over the top. So what does it take to affect the aluminum? The stationary magnet doesn't do anything. Then I put a string through that aluminum ball and started it in pendulum motion. As it was swinging, it has momentum. I slid the magnet right underneath it and notice what happens to the ball. What's going on with the conservation of momentum? Where's the momentum going? Watch what happens when we try to start the huge weight in pendulum motion when the copper plate is right underneath. Now watch what happens when we move the copper plate. Then if we shift the copper plate so that it's in line with the magnet as it swings, watch how the deceleration changes. So where did that momentum of the huge magnet swinging go? Do you got any ideas? And where did all the energy go of that huge weight? It had to go somewhere. All these experiments got me curious about Newton's third law applications and how I could test that and see it. 
because every action has an equal and opposite reaction according to the third law. So I put some PVC down to act as rollers, set the copper plate on top, and then rub the magnet over the surface. I could feel that the copper had been applying a force to the magnet, and I was curious if the magnet was applying a force to the copper, because when you apply a force to a mass, it accelerates. Watch the copper plate. You see that? It's changing directions. It's accelerating. That means it's feeling a force. So at least something that I'm sort of used to is applying here. Now I want to see what happens if I take my magnet and instead of having the poles perpendicular to the copper, instead make them parallel to the surface of the copper, how that affects. First, I rolled down a piece of styrofoam that was the same shape of the magnet. Then I rolled down the magnet. Look at that. If we roll them down at the same time, we can see the difference in their accelerations. Then I thought there has to be some cool brakes application to this. So I took a piece of wood and had that be the starting point and the copper came after that. In order to see normal acceleration, I dropped an aluminum ball down the ramp. And then I dropped our magnet down the ramp. What do you think is going to happen when that magnet hits the copper? I filmed some more experiments, but this has already taken too long. If you like that, please like it, and I will see you in the lab soon.